I want to bring in Dr. Perry Wilson, an associate professor of medicine at Yale. Uh, good morning. What do people need to know about the possible link to this syndrome? Yeah, this syndrome is called Guillain-Barre syndrome, and it's 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 well known. It occurs in about 3,000 to 6,000 people in the U.S. every year, typically in the setting of an inflammatory condition um, like a viral infection. And indeed, people have been getting this after getting infected with COVID-19, um, but also associated with some vaccines, rarely um, even with the flu vaccine. And the data does seem to suggest that there's a minimally elevated risk, about a risk of one in 100,000 um, with the J&J &J vaccine. Looks like the risk group uh, tends to be older men, men above age 50, um, and most of the cases are happening within about two weeks of the shot. Uh, but viewers need to know, very rare, um, treatable, and also, you know, the, the FDA has uh, confirmed that this, this risk is still minuscule enough that the benefit of vaccination far outweighs the sum of the risks. And how do you convince people who are on, you know, the edge about maybe getting vaccinated? I feel like some people are looking for reasons not to. What do you say to them? Yeah, I think you're right. And I've been speaking a lot with people who are who are on the edge here. And one thing I've realized is that uh, the choice to vaccinate feels like um, something you're choosing yourself. And people have an emotional reaction to thinking about bad outcomes that they feel that they brought upon through their own choices, as opposed to the bad outcomes that happen to things that are done to them or that happen you know, by bad luck, which is how people often view coronavirus infection. One of the ways we need to reframe this discussion though, is that getting coronavirus infection right now is a choice. It, it might not feel like it, but because we have these vaccines that are so highly protective, it is just as much a choice to become infected with coronavirus or to get a vaccine. You can't really sit this one out. So I've tried to reframe the discussion. You're not choosing really between vaccine and no vaccine. You're choosing between vaccine and getting infected with coronavirus, and your outcomes are going to be much worse if you get infected with coronavirus. Good way to put it. So CBS's Gail King, a journalist there, she's banning any unvaccinated family members from Thanksgiving dinner this year. So obviously we've been enjoying holidays a little bit more. You know, we've got the fourth, but people are outside. They're at barbecues. But when it comes to coming indoors in more of a confined space and, and you have family members that don't have the vaccine, what is your message to those people? Should you allow them in? Should you not? It's a fine line, I feel like, because you're well, definitely hey. playing with people's feelings at this point, too. Yeah, I mean, hey, the, you know, the holidays are always tough with family, right? But listen, it's your house. And so so I think people are well within their rights to say, listen, I don't feel comfortable having unvaccinated people in my home. Maybe that's because you have children in your household who are themselves unvaccinated. Maybe you just want to do your part by not having, you know, multiple unvaccinated people mingling together because that is a risk of transmission. Even if you're protected by the vaccine, you know, it's not necessarily a great idea to have a bunch of unvaccinated people in one small place just from a public health point of view, whatever your sort of motivations are, or even if you just don't feel comfortable, it's your house. Tell people to, you know, respect your wishes for now. All right. Good advice there. We appreciate it. Dr. Perry Wilson, thank you so much. Always a pleasure. Thank you.